European competitions have come and gone over the years, from the generally well-respected and frankly awesome Cup Winners' Cup to the mystifying and erratic Intertoto Cup, the rules and format to which I've never truly understood. And honestly, I'm not sure UEFA did either. What do you mean there are three winners? And how did we qualify for this thing again? Oh, it was fair play. Right. And in recent years, we've had the introduction of the Europa Conference League. So I thought, why not go on better and develop a European competition that is only for teams that are playing in the second tier? So this idea is heavily inspired from something I heard on a recent episode of the Football Clichés podcast. Ellis James and I think a second tier Europa League would be unreal. Bochum, Cremonese, Levante away, memories for life. The away day potential is incredible. I would like it to be not actually based on league position, on application. Right. Any, anyone who's up for it will have you. So I thought to myself, how hard could it be to replicate that concept inside a football manager? Or more accurately, I asked Editor Wizard Hadrian. I then began to think about what an incredibly difficult task this would be to achieve before immediately receiving a message saying that he'd actually done it already. So today I present to you a brand new European competition, the Europa Secundus League, following almost all the normal rules of a Champions League, except it's second tier clubs with a couple of caveats. I'll link the two files that we're using for this in the description to the video as always, so you can download and have a little play around with it yourself. This one actually feels like something you might genuinely use and actually have some fun with. It's not like we're putting a team in space this time, I guess. The practical applications of that were a little bit limited. The second tier cup.fmf goes into the editor data folder, which of course you'll see on the screen now. Then when you actually come into the game, when you go to load your game setup, you obviously need to go up to here and make sure that it is selected. You'll see that it says Micronesia. The second file goes into the folder called database setups. Uh, if you use any of my custom database setups for things like loading all the players and stuff, you should already have that folder. If not, you may have to create it. But this just allows you to get to make sure that all the teams actually have players in them. So when they load in, they're not just blank squads. That can then be loaded from the custom database menu when you go into the game setup. I'm sure you know how to do this, but just in case you click that, load it in, bish bash bosh, good to go. You can see what it basically does. It does load a lot of players, I grant you, but you don't have to turn this on if you don't want to. Then to ensure this actually works, you need to make sure that you have Micronesia selected because that is technically where this competition is run from. But before you think, oh, you've moved loads of clubs to Micronesia. No, it works way better than that. It essentially just functions as a normal tournament as a domestic cup there, but all the teams are pulled directly from their domestic leagues and still play alongside their normal fixtures while playing in this tournament. And because of that, the best thing is you could literally use this in a normal save. Say you wanted to do a save in England. Let's just turn these off for the time being. You'd be totally fine doing this and it would actually work. I've tested it and they're actually going to be using that as an example today. But you've got to make sure to have Micronesia loaded for this to actually work. Now to those caveats I mentioned earlier, because there are a couple of things. One of the bigger things is that it doesn't have any access to the coefficient system that the rest of the European tournaments use, because that was simply way beyond the scope of a video like this. Uh, so it means that the static number of places are assigned to each nation for Europe will not change throughout the uh the years as it would do in the other European competitions. It was also impossible to get it to pick the top finishing sides from those second tiers, so it chooses based on reputation as well, which admittedly isn't the perfect way to do it, but it was the only way to actually make this function. But luckily, as a lot of those teams tend to get promoted out of those leagues and the reputation changes quite a lot, it means that it's rarely ever the same teams in it at the same time anyway. And we have had to go back to the old style Champions League format with the four team groups, the, the old school style that I'm sure a lot of you are used to and some of you might honestly want back at this point, although maybe not. I actually quite like the new stuff. Lastly, Gibraltar and San Marino sadly do still send top flight sides because they don't have other divisions that we can access. It is randomized for those guys, though, so it won't always be Lincoln Red Imps. It still has prize money similar to that of the Conference League and a reputation level that is set slightly lower because, you know, realism. And because this has essentially ended up with us having an isolated standalone European competition that we can kind of do whatever we want with, it opens the doors for a lot of other potential ideas, which you guys may or may not be interested in. The biggest one for me is that we could potentially do a Champions League where the teams from each nation are drawn randomly from a pool of every single team in that nation's like team pool similar to the way that we did the random promotion video last year on fm23 except on a much grander scale so you could end up with a non-league side from england ended up in there or atalanta from italy at the same tournament so if you like the sound of that let me know and i'll definitely try to see if we can uh, work something out on that one so what we're going to do today is i'm going to run you through a season of it just so you can get an idea how it works just very briefly and then we're going to go 20 years into the future to see what weird stuff has happened over that period in this strange international european slash micronesian tournament but just before we do because we have micronesia turned on i was introduced to some absolutely wonderful team names. Uh, my favourite of which, of course, was, well, I mean, speaks for itself, Pink Panthers. And then who should I find in their squad but two different fellas called Lexter 
and Lester James, both of whom are 23, both of whom are centre-backs. Terrific. They must get so confused. But for now, we move. So now that we're past the actual preliminary rounds, you can see the teams that have actually been dumped in. And obviously, because they have this is a tournament involving teams from all leagues, we can actually see what leagues they're from by the little monikers on the side. You'll also notice a lot of teams don't have that, and that's because they're outside of leagues that essentially have names in this current version of FM. You'll also notice some B teams in here too, because of course they play in the second tier league sometimes. So Riga's second side, Dinamo Tbilisi's second side, also in here against Flint Town. Shout out to Budapest Honvid as well. And Finn Hart's from the second tier of Ireland. It'll all start to become more clear once we get to sort of the latter rounds of qualifying and then into the groups itself, because obviously that's when the English, Spanish, Italian, German teams enter, and French, of course. Now, you'd expect this tournament would be dominated by those sides, because especially at the second tier level, the squad strength is likely to be very high. But I do believe we will still see some potential surprises in the latter rounds, especially when we go into the future as things change around a little bit. Out of interest, if you do happen to see your local club in here, potentially, which, you know, some of the smaller nations, there's very much a chance that could be the case, do let me know. I want to know about them. We need our local Leotar historian to tell us all about the Bosnian second division. And you can see now that we're at the third round of qualifying, some slightly more recognisable names have entered the tournament, including Air United. Big up them, along with Twa and Santa Clara from Portugal. So we come to the playoff second legs, which of course is entry into the groups. And amazingly, Leotar are actually still in there. A one-all draw in the first leg against Santa Clara. Sean are now in here as well. Air United trail Twa as well. Shipbenik look like they're heading out along with uh, some various other sides. Looks like Zolta Vardigam might also not reach there uh, as they're up against the Dutch side. So we'll find out who's going to actually be in the groups. And then all the other teams will join in a moment. So Santa Clara scrape through in the end, as do Sean. Uh, wow, Air United with the draw away at Twa. That's pretty impressive, honestly. Uh, Shibanik do win, but they actually do lose. Horsens go through along with Camber as well. So let's see what the group actually looks like. So here we have it, the final groups for the tournament. We've got Auxerre, Elche, Hamburg and Leeds in one group, Cremonese, Espanyol, Herta, and Maritima. That is a very tough group. Levante, Schalke, AC, Horsens, and Camba, Ajaccio, Dundee, uh, Inhulets, and Southampton in a group there. Fortuna, Dusseldorf, Middlesbrough, Spezia, and Vilsa. Middlesbrough in there. Bari, Enen, Sion, and Santa Clara. Admira, Kulubara, Lesser and Trois. And then lastly, uh, Hmiki, Passos de Ferreira, Real Valladolid, and Sampdoria. It's mostly concentrated on the bigger leagues, but I feel like that will change over time. There are still some smaller sides in here, though, like a second division side in Ukraine, Inhulets Petrove. So keep an eye on them. So after two rounds of fixtures, it seems to be going fairly smoothly. Leeds have obviously got back-to-back -back wins in there. Second place in that group is looking pretty tight, though. Same here with Maritimo cut off at the bottom. Uh, Canberra have started very well, considering they only got into the playoffs. Southampton have picked up a result, and it looks like Dundee United have actually picked up two very good points. They beat Ajaccio and got a draw against Inhulet. Wow, if Dundee United got through, that'd be very impressed. Middles were not performing as well as I would have thought. Neither is Santa Clara. Leicester doing okay, but have drawn against Abbanavaca. As you'd expect, Kim Ki, if I'm saying that correctly, not doing super well. Out of interest, if we just look at Middlesbrough's schedule for the championship, you can see that the matches just slot in as if they were in a normal European competition. Um, now, the travelling might be expensive hadn't really thought that part through but as you can see it does still work normally with a normal database which is just great quickly cutting back in after match day four Leeds have already qualified as group winners in their usual stuff going on it looks like Espanyol and Cremonese are through I'm surprised Herter have done so poorly Canberra have absolutely killed it in that group Dundee United have still got a great chance at qualifying they may have only got one more point in there which was presumably yeah another draw against the Jats they might actually get through Middlesbrough probably will get through as well any other surprises in there Leicester have not made it easy for themselves you might say um um, but the rest of it looks pretty straightforward. Back in a sec. So after the last match day, Leeds actually don't end up winning every game. They seem to drop off a little bit towards the end, but they were already through. Hamburg joined them in the next round as well. Espinol and Cremonese, obviously. Camber, again, nearly bowls it up towards the end there. And they see Horsens actually get through with a negative goal difference. Southampton and Dundee United getting through. Big up the Dundee United massive. Fortuna Dusseldorf actually finish ahead of Middlesbrough in their group. Really surprising there. FC Sean and FC Emin also getting through. Leicester and Kulabara get through ahead of Twa. Wins against Abba of Vaca, and then they just managed to get the draws when it mattered the most. Only lost to Leicester. That's surprising. Fair play to the Serbian club. And lastly, Sampdoria and Real Valladolid also go through. So actually, a few surprise exits. A lot of French sides didn't do as well as I thought. All the Italian clubs, honestly. So the round of 16s are done and dusted. Southampton with a 2-1 victory. Espanyol sneak through. FC Emin end up taking out Dundee, but they do move through to the quarterfinals. Leicester, despite only winning 1-0 in the first leg against Kulubara, do get through it in the end. Camber knock out Hamburg as well. Leeds also through. Middlesbrough fall to FC Sean of Switzerland as well. So there's actually some smaller, not smaller nations, but some surprising teams getting through. Curious to see how this is going to affect the league form of Saints, Leeds, Middlesbrough, and um, Leicester. 
sense of inevitability has kind of happened in the end there. Espanyol leads through Leicester narrowly and Southampton through as well. So three English sides in the semis. I expect we'll see this quite a lot, but we move. So it will be a lead Southampton final. Espanyol for Leicester lost the first leg 5-1. Let's get to that now. Don't want to keep you too long on this so we can get into the future stuff. So there we have it. Leeds win the final. Now I just want to quickly see how this has affected their league form because, you know, it's a lot of extra games. Uh, not at all, apparently. They've actually done a double, essentially won the league and won the Europa Secundus League, which I'd say is more prestigious if you ask me. In fact, all of them were right in there. Every single one of them made the playoffs despite that. So it's at this point in the video that I'm reliably informed that I'm supposed to say, if you've enjoyed it, drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I might even clean my mic. Who knows? Anything could happen. And now for the first time ever on one of my videos, we're going to go to the future. It might be a lie. It is July 9th, 2043, which means we've got 20 years of competition to take a little look through. I will be... I expect to see at least one team from a slightly smaller nation make the final one of these years. It's bound to. Maybe even a really surprise winner that you wouldn't have even expected to be in the second tier. You wait for Europa Secundus League or what we say in anything... It, wow. <laughs> hmm. I'm sensing a pattern here. I guess the best thing to do would just be to have a look at the group stage for last season just to see if there was any strangeness. So Leicester and Rayo Vallecano, Leicester just cannot get out. Hull City in there as well with Burnley this time around. He did win every single game. So there's that. Uh, Monza up in there with Paderborn, Rayo Arve. Uh, Santa Clara actually won a group this time. Nice for them. Cadiz were in there as well. Hamburg, Girona as well. Fortuna Dusseldorf, they can't escape. Lamia also qualified for the knockouts. As did Forest and Mechelen. There was Livingston in there as well. SKU Amstetten too. But what you presumably want to see is the winners. Uh, I really hope there's someone in the final, at least, that isn't just an English club. Okay, so actually... Uh, now, obviously, this is a different simulation, so it doesn't have the Leeds United win from the first year. Hamburg won the first one in this version. Cremonese, so England again, this time with Wolves, England, Italy, England. Spain with Real Oviedo, Italy, Italy, England, France. Okay, Brest did a, a good job there. They're apparently the tits of the second division. Nuremberg in there too. Hanover, Forest, Hoffenheim, and then it's just all England. Please tell me someone that wasn't... No... <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I'm just ever so slightly disappointed that we didn't just see a random second division Serbian side getting out. I had hopes for you, Kolobara. I think the only repeat winners, Southampton have won it twice. Leeds have actually picked up three of these. They've made that kind of their speciality. Nice to see Bristol City in there as well. Well, consider me suitably disappointed by that, but it's sort of what you would expect, I suppose, given the quality level between the second tiers of, say, England and Spain and France versus, say, the second tier of, I don't know, Latvia. Now, unfortunately, we can't see overall records because, oh, we can't. No, that's this season, unfortunately. We can't see the overall ones. They don't seem to work properly. Properly. Um, but biggest wins in there. Is there any double digits? There was. It was an 11-0. Not to mention a 10-2 between EK Sirius and FK Tallinn. A couple of 6-5s, actually, and a 7-4. West Ham and Borth have also won nine games in a row in this tournament before, which presumably must have lapsed over multiple seasons. Actually, maybe not. I want to find who was the top scorer ever. So there's this guy, Zalan Vanksha of Union saint Gilois. Probably not even still playing, but he gets 16 one season. Now, usually it's going to be dominated by a player that was presumably playing in all the preliminary rounds. Although if there was someone that wasn't, like Sekou Mara got nine for Saints one year. Lorenzo Luca got 10 for Fulham. Now the Everton under-21 manager, weirdly. Good to see you getting like some 61,000 attendances in this as well. Also loving the double-digit attendances. Oh, that was so close. Just if two people had just not turned up, we could have had a single-digit attendance. Just a little addendum here. I've just been looking through and I've just noticed that Leicester actually made the Conference League final a few years into this as well. So they reached, and presumably I think at some point, one the second tier European trophy and then reached another European trophy for the top tier. I also have several questions about Palace and Sheffield United winning the Europa League. Not to mention the three Champions League wins that Aston Villa have here and the two runner-up spots for Spurs. I'm so sorry. And I realised there wasn't a great deal to show you in the future how I just had a hope that something interesting might have happened there and unfortunately we were a little bit let down. However, I do believe though with a Champions League format like this where every single nation's representatives are randomly drawn from a pool of every single team in that country down to like non-league level that could cause the kind of chaos that I really do think we're looking for. So if you would be interested in that as a video, let me know because frankly, I might just do it anyway because that sounds exciting as hell to me. Um, I want to see a non-league team win a European trophy, damn it. I realise this has been a much shorter one, but you know, sometimes that's good. So if you have enjoyed this, drop a like. That'll be fabulous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'll be glorious as well. And I'll see you guys in another video very, very soon. I'm going to do the agent tutorial at some point as well as another big project that hopefully this time it works out. Anyway, I'll join you guys soon. Hold your gun. Capybara. Hurrah!